Hello, hello. We are live on the learngrasshopper.com uh, webinars. So I know there's already some people here. So just write some comments if you can hear us and see us well. Maybe Sebastian, you can also say some words, some test words if a uh, participant can hear you. Yeah, I'm hearing you, Chris, at least. And I hope you can hear me. Yeah, and... I can hear Sebastian. So yeah. just, just, <laughs> just write some comments. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just write some just write some comments. We are uh, we are live on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, YouTube. Uh, so just write if you can hear us uh, well. So it's always a little bit lag between YouTube live, but yeah, we get the first comment. So here, and uh, that everything is good. Just maybe write some few. Uh, just one one sentence where you come from i don't know sebastian where is uh, most tecla users are coming from is it finland or may maybe united states right mm, quite global i'd say pretty pretty evenly between the states the europe and and uh southeast asia i guess okay so I, I can't say which country is in the lead, but of course, up in Finland, we have a lot of, of clients uh, because we're based in Finland. But on the other hand, uh, fin 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 Finland is quite a small country as well. So, hmm. uh, yeah, but I remember when I first visit, uh, just just a short message. We will start in uh, five minutes, so it's not we'll start exactly at 2 p.m. Uh, so just five minutes we will we are just checking everything so we will get some comments already so we are starting at two so just coming to come back i was really surprised when i first visit finland and talk about software and talk about autocad and i asked some i spoke with some finnish people and they said that what is autocad <laughs> <laughs> yeah it can be that way around as well <laughs> yeah so it's more more uh, more uh, more tecla Okay, we have some people from Finland and USA. Uh, it's, it needs to be it needs to be really early in the USA. Um, we have also comments from LinkedIn. That's good to have that on LinkedIn. We are also on LinkedIn, so we can see also comments on on that as well. Yeah, it might be a bit early on uh, in the States at this point, especially on the West Coast. It's still night almost, but yeah, but I get it, some, it some yeah, but I get message that someone will join even if it will be 4 a.m. So they will join anyway. Ostava, Canada. Yeah. So okay. yeah, people, people <laughs> want to see you, really wants to see you uh, live, maybe ask questions. So today at the end, it will be Q&A session. I am going to say it also. Uh, afterwards, so if you have already some questions uh, to me or and to most most uh, for sure to Sebastian, so just write on the chat. So I will I will for sure register that, and at the end I will ask. Uh, so there is a great possibility to get the answers for the developer of Tecla uh, live link to uh, Grasshopper. Just three minutes, uh, so three minutes left. So we will uh, start exactly, and we'll go exactly to the uh, directly to the presentation. And just a small request: uh, we are live on the free platform, so if we can give some thumbs up and hearts or likes, so it will just help uh, to reach this webinar to to more people. We're going to see that, so. If, you can really contribute and uh, to make and share this uh, share this event so maybe even more people can uh, see that i see already there is 100 people so it's good so we'll see how ma how many people will join uh, finally by the way chris one thing that i, I got asked uh, by hmm. some people is that if will this be available afterwards as well or is this this one time only yeah, yeah, it will be available. Everyone who register uh, with the email, so we'll get the link to the to this uh, to this event on YouTube that can uh, watch it watch it online. So I will show you on my intro. Uh, and yeah, good question. So yeah, it will be uh, available. So if you cannot, uh, if you do not have time to see whole the uh, session, so of course it will be available, uh, and I will send you after. 
uh, after this webinar i will send email to all of us all of you who just registered So we have already some questions from Victor. Sebastian, can you show some practical examples using live link, especially by detailing in Tecla? Do you have any, do you have, have you prepared any examples today, Sebastian? Yeah, one, one part of the presentation will be demos for sure. And we will show some detailing as well. So that's something to look forward to, I hope. We have Luis from Peru. That's uh, it's it needs to be quite early in Peru. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really hard to find out the best uh, time uh, for the different time zones. Maybe a little bit uh, later, but of course it will be not best for Europe, whose people are finishing uh, the work. So yeah, so let's stay with this one. So yeah, as Sebastian said, this will be available. So I will share some info how to. Uh, how to get the link. Um, okay, so we are, it's 2 p.m. Uh, already in uh, Europe. Uh, so hi everyone, welcome to the Learn Grasshopper webinar. And today we have a session. So the presentation session will be about one hour. So it will be, I will uh, show uh, shortly agenda but it will be 60 about 60 minutes after the 60 minutes we are going to have a q and a session so we if you are watching on the facebook linkedin or youtube so you have a chat on the on the right side so you can write your comments and i will register all your comments and i will ask sebastian all your questions so it will be after this uh, presentation um, so only registered users will get the link to the to this webinar uh, if you haven't registered yet, so go to learngrasshopper.com slash webinars. You can find the link here in the, on, the, on the slide. And uh, you will also get the gift that I prepared. And I will, get, I will give it to all of the all of users that are at the end to the session. So it's worth to wait to the end. Uh, and yeah, so I will send this link. It will be on the YouTube. It will be the private uh, private video. So I will share this link with all of you who just registered. So there's four points that uh, many, maybe uh, some of you are wondering what you are going to learn from this session. So first of all, it will be a little bit discussion with uh, Sebastian about the future development of uh, Grasshopper Tecla Live Link. Next, Sebastian will show interesting use cases and show the steps, how you can actually use Tecla structure using Grasshopper Link. And of course, you will learn lots of benefits that can parametric design can bring to all the modeling. It will be in the building and the structures and the bridges uh, structures as well. So this is the benefits that you are uh, you're going to gain from this. So welcome uh, again. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Krzysztof Wojsław. I'm a, a founder of LearnGrasshopper.com platform where I'm teaching all engineers Practical, uh, practical use of parametric design. Uh, in November 2022, I started with my educational platform, Learn Grasshopper uh, Fundamentals, and I'm happy that 400 people uh, registered uh, already. Uh, so, uh, and there's already lots of questions when the next edition start. Mm, so actually it will start in summer. So for, the, for those. So I'm now most of the time focused on creating content and learning materials. Uh, in addition, I'm also academic lecturer at the global master's program at Ziggurat in Barcelona and Norwegian University of Science and Technology, when I share also knowledge about model-based projects and use of parametric design. So this is the agenda uh, for today. So first will be short interview. Uh, about some question about development of the Tecla Live Link. So it will be maybe more for people who already are using, but also maybe inspiration for you who wants to start with uh, using Grasshopper in Tecla. Afterwards, Sebastian will take the screen and will show some great projects from Tecla Global Beam Award. And at the end, uh, last, uh, last half an hour will be Q&A session.
So that's uh, all for from me right now. So we can start with this um, uh, with this uh, first uh, first uh, point from agenda. So I have prepared some questions from to to Sebastian. So first of all, I would like to ask uh, present uh, Sebastian for you. So uh, I. We get to know each other three exactly three years ago, and in Oslo, when the Oslo seminar uh, it was conference about when I had the presentation about using Grasshopper on Ransalva Bridge, and Sebastian were there, so we could met. It was the last presentation, uh, last conference before uh, COVID hit, so it was pleasure to meet, and I'm uh, I'm happy to guest uh, to host you here as a as a guest. So thanks for accepting this invitation. So Sebastian, I, I will just present, is a mag magician so, who is b standing back uh, the, all the development of Grasshopper Tecla Live Link. So if you are using already all the components from the Grasshopper tab connecting to Tecla, so Sebastian, maybe 100%, um, all of them? So far, it's, so far, yeah, it's been 100%. So far. Yeah. So, so, you, so can, you can blame me for everything. <laughs> okay, so let's let's blame if there's some uh, some in the comments. So let's blame. No, I actually uh, I, I asked some of my colleagues from my work to just uh, get some questions about some wrongs and bad things in Tecla Live Link, and they could not find it. So it's uh, mm. it's good. But if you find it, so let's comment. So uh, yeah, so you can uh, maybe present a little bit yourself, maybe more. Yeah, thanks for the great intro and th thanks for hosting me, Chris. So uh, I don't have those nice slides that you had about, about myself, but basically I've been with Trimble Tecla for the last uh, about 10, 11 years, maybe. And for a big chunk of that time, I've been preoccupied with this Grasshopper Tecla Structures workflows. So that's that's about, I say, 80% of my time nowadays, the development, uh, the support and the promotion of, of the Grasshopper integrations. Yeah. So, so how long have you been working with development of Grasshopper Tecla Live Link? If I far as I remember, I started with Grasshopper Tecla Live Link in Tecla 2016. It, it, it was yeah, the I first think, edition, or I think that was the year we released it. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the short backstory there is that we saw already before that uh, some of our customers were using Grasshopper and Tecla structures together. Uh, there was one example in Denmark, it's called the ARC by the engineering consultant company Mo. So mm -hmm. it's a waste management uh, uh, plant. And on top of it, they have this ski slope that goes down. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of like complex geometry on top of it, which they used Grasshopper to optimize and then send into Tecla structures. And we figured out, hey, that looks really efficient and, and really cool. So maybe we could try to provide that to a larger user base as well. And that's when we tried to then make that first integration. And, and from then, it's then just rolled onwards, I guess. Yeah. So from this time, you were like 100% responsible for that, or you had or also another tasks in Trimble? Yeah, it, it's been wearing, but uh, it's always been at least, you know, maybe half of my time dedicated to this one project. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm doing the development, but of course, we have support uh, staff in the areas who are, have gotten really good at using Grasshopper and able to take care of, of much of those support requests. But a lot of it still ends on my table. So kind of as it gets more and more popular, I get less and less time to actually do development on it. So it's a trade-off, but it, it's fun nonetheless. Yeah, and I and I can assume that is getting really popular nowadays. Are you seeing like this curve? It's more hyperbolic or liner, or how it looks like this interest about using Tecla, yeah, the Grasshopper in Tecla. Yeah, we do see a lot of interest. Uh, initially, it was mostly in the infra market, so bridges and tunnels and stuff like that. But nowadays, it can be any kinds of projects, and uh, we'll see a bit of that in in the presentation later as well. So. Hmm. Uh, and have ever Trimble considered, or have you maybe ever considered to try to write your own, uh, like a parametric tool? I know that some some of the companies, like for example uh, Bentley, they create own parametric tool. There is another companies also. Have you ever thought about it, or it, it was like, 
okay, Grasshopper is a great tool. They have already connection like with Archicad. Maybe it was already then, right? Yeah, uh, it was around the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So have you ever yeah. thought about that? It's interesting. Yeah, this you see nowadays the the race for many software vendors want to utilize this kind of visual scripting workflows and and many of them connect with Grasshopper, but as you say, uh, some of them create their own tools. And we do have one tool in-house in Trimble called Materia, and you can actually go and try it out if you want at creator.trimble.com. So that's a visual programming platform in the cloud, and mostly it's used uh, currently for, for uh, uh, generating those live components in SketchUp. So it's about surface geometry, but of course, I would like to see that we would have a version that could create actual semantic objects like beams, bolts, and stuff, and feed that into Tecla structures. But with that being said, I don't uh, see that this would replace what we have with Grasshopper because, as mm. you mentioned, it's a huge ecosystem. It's over 10 years of development, and it's just so versatile. So I don't think we would uh, want to compete with that one. But for kind of specific use cases, like providing a logic for a custom component in Tecla, so something that you currently need to use C Sharp or the custom component mm -hmm. editor, which isn't really that accessible to new users. Uh, I'm not saying that visual programming is either, but at least it's, it's more fun to learn visual programming than C Sharp, say. Mm -hmm. So for those specific use cases where I mean, Grasshopper might be overkill, uh, I think that uh, our own in-house solution like Materia could, could be useful. But for the overall workflows where you update the whole model and you uh, go out to different softwares, Grasshopper will still be the main main hub, at least uh, as yeah. I see it. That's uh, that's good to hear. And for those who don't know this connection, so actually it's for free, right? It's available from the warehouse. If you have access to the warehouse, so you can download the live link connection like components for free, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And what about the, like the updates? For sure, there's many people are watching here right now that are using Tecla. I see some comments that they are actually now using Tecla in the background. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when the like, how is the plan with the updates? I know that like all of us are we are knowing that Tecla is releasing new updates every year. It's coming. I just got the message that this week just came Tecla 2023. Is it correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And is it planned to make also update for the new Grasshopper components? Because there is, you cannot write, you cannot use the uh, plugin from 2023 into 22, right? So you need, you have to update your plugin. Yeah, that that's true, and that that's a uh, not a big issue. We're still waiting for the final release of, of Tecla Structures 2023, but uh, at least at that at that time we will then release uh, the Grasshopper link as well. But otherwise, we're not on the same cycle because this is uh, an extension, basically. So we can release it whenever we want when we have something interesting to update. Like I said, unfortunately, uh, we, we can't add that much anymore right now. But I guess uh, like in the next big uh, big uh, things that I would like to, to see implemented is rebar sets, bolts, and welds. Those have all been requested a bunch of times. Hmm. So I can't commit to a schedule, unfortunately, but as soon as we have something ready, we usually release it like a couple of times a year. So you cannot tell any secrets right now to users what is coming. Maybe it's some little one component which will come for the next edition or still is a secret? <laughs> well, I haven't, I haven't decided to be fair because uh, there are good, good use cases for all these new components. So yeah. Okay, okay, I will keep you. But is there any, uh, it's really uh, where can we find out that there is a new edition? How it's the, this news um, spread? How, how can you say? Yeah, I guess the easiest way is just to go to Tecla Warehouse, uh, sign in with your credentials, and then you should find a subscribe icon somewhere there on that uh, link page. Mm -hmm. And then you will get a notification as soon as we upload a new new version. Yeah. Uh, that uh, that's good. And the the question about like if we are talking about the future. So on the first of April two thousand twenty two, just came the news about Grasshopper two zero. Is mm. there something that you have already explored already? If, if you have checked that, or have you have you have you got meeting in Trimble? Okay, what we are doing now? Are we are going to prepare new tool set for Grasshopper two or? 
Uh, how is uh, what is your opinion about that? Have you tested? I haven't actually yet because I'm waiting for something a bit more stable. And for sure, I mean, once it gets up on par with Grasshopper One, which might take another year or two, uh, then it would be interesting to see what kind of benefits we really, really can get. So McNeil has talked about increased, uh, improved in uh, performance and and so on, and maybe different ways to to do things both in the back end and as an end user. Uh, but also, I'm relieved to see that apparently you can use Grasshopper One components from Grasshopper Two. It might not be uh, the most efficient way, but at least I mean that means we're, there's no pressure to immediately develop a 2.0 version. Mm -hmm. But that's something we will look into for sure. Yeah, yeah, good to good to hear that. We have already some comments uh, from Thomas. Are you planning to add Tecla Live Link to Rhino Package Manager for each Tecla software version? That can be interesting. Yeah, that would be good to have. Agree. Uh, it's not in the plans, but we maybe should look at putting it in the plans. I guess mm -hmm. the only the only downside is so far it's been what we call a maintenance benefit. But nowadays with the subscription mm. business model, uh, I guess there's no there's no downside to putting it into to the package management manager. Yeah. Yeah, OK, I understand it. Because there is also educational version, right? There is a different version for educational yeah. purposes. Yeah, so that one you can use then in, in the edu educational configuration of Tecla structures. And that can be downloaded by anyone. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that's good. OK, we can go to uh, your presentation. We have already some questions that I will ask you at the end. Uh, yep. So I already will start it. So if you can share your share your screen with presentation. So let me see. I'll do that. If you can go to presenter mode, yeah. Here. So it's coming through, OK. Yeah, it's here. Right. So stage, stage is yours. Thank you, Chris. So this is the formal part now of, of the webinar, uh, where I'll be discussing the integration between Grasshopper and, and Tecla structures. And I won't assume that all of you know Tecla structures or Grasshopper for that matter. So we'll briefly look at them and also talk about parametric design. And I do have an agenda, as you should. So let's just clarify what we mean with parametric design, look at the tools we have, then some practical demonstrations. And finally, we'll look at some projects, real life projects from our customers. So uh first you might also have heard uh, these other terms like computational design algorithmic design generative design and for the purpose of this presentation uh, i would just consider them different flavors of kind of the same basic thing which is to enhance the way we, we use the computer when when doing our designs so let's use this uh, airport terminal as an, uh, an example it's from here in finland uh, helsinki near to where i live and they just finalized this terminal in the autumn, I think, and it has this beautiful wooden ceiling. But you can see it consists here of, of hundreds of different wooden elements, which all are unique in their geometry. So you could imagine how tedious it would be to just go in and by hand draw all of those, model them in 3D and so on. And then at some point, of course, the owner or the architect comes in and says that, hey, I don't really like that roof line so, or ceiling line, so can we change it a bit? and you will need to remodel everything. So here it just would make sense to let the computer do the heavy lifting. You define your ceiling uh, curve, and then everything gets generated for you. And this is what we can do with, with a parametric design workflow. So same thing here on the outside, similar kind of challenges and, and similar solutions are available. And I would go as far as to call this like the next level of construction design. So we had 2D CAD, we have 3D modeling. But this is a completely new way of doing stuff, and I'll qualify that in just a moment. Parametric design, as we can hear from the name, it's about parameters. So if we now take this bridge as an example, we have inputs like the road alignment, uh, the height above the water, and the angle of that pylon, and so on. So these will be considered your input parameters. And the next step is then to define some kind of rules. And the idea here is that the input parameters feed into the rules, and together they will generate the geometry for you. So you don't need to go in and manual, manually model anything in this bridge. You can just let the rules take care of it. 
And the huge benefit then comes when it uh, when you have changes. So say the city comes in and says that we need to increase the clearance about the water. Then you can just feed that new parameter value into your rules and they will make sure to update your design. So without you needing to go in there and do the manual modeling. And you get this brand new bridge model, which happens to look exactly like the old one, but. I love, I love the visualization. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> I, I put some effort into it. So when we talk about next level, yeah, uh, what I mean is really that it, it shifts the way you express your design from the geometry to actually the explicit lo logic. So as an engineer, when you want to create, you know, an array or a grid of columns and you know the spacing should be six meters and you have all that in your head and you start placing them. Instead, you can put that uh, logic like the rules explicitly for the computer to parse and just give the inputs like I want 100 columns spaced this and this way and it will just place it for you. So you're doing the same thing that you previously have done in your head, but now you're doing, uh, you put it down somewhere. And then the model, like, like I said, will just be an outcome of that, uh, those rules and the input data. So as you can imagine, it will make your design iterations way faster, which also means that you can actually explore hundreds of design options um, because you don't need to model each and every one. You can just go through them and, and find the, the best solution much quicker and, and much more likely. And using the compute, computer in this way also makes it uh, uh, or lowers the risk of you doing uh, like human errors. I'm not saying that computer are completely errorless, but there, there are different kinds of errors there, I guess. So let's just look at a quick example of what this might look like in practice. So say that I want to model something like this portal frame here. And I could go in in you know, any CAD solution and start uh, laying out all these beams and stuff. But if I have it parametrically defined, I just have a set of parameters. And whenever I want to change the design, I can change the input values. And my rules will then make sure that uh, my design gets updated however I want. And in this case, the rules, they come from, uh, from Grasshopper. And we'll look more at, at that in just a moment. But just to give a brief overview of what we're talking about. So the tool you saw there was Tecla Structures. And for those of you that are maybe not that familiar, it's a BIM collaboration tool for digital construction. And I guess some of the key selling points is that it's accurate and it produces actual constructible models. So you can model everything down to the last uh, bolt or rebar and regardless of the model size or the material. And it can be used uh, in the whole design process all the way from really early stage design down into detailing and then pushing it to fabrication. And you can produce all your documentation and so on to basically any standard you want. And Rhino Grasshopper, uh, and again, most of you might be familiar with it, but still Rhino, that's a, a 3D surface modeling tool. It's really good at what it does, but perhaps not a BIM tool as such because the objects in, in Rhino, they don't contain that much information apart from their geometry. And together with Rhino, we have Grasshopper, and this is a visual programming platform. And this is where you would do your parametric design, set up the rules and stuff, and those then uh, feed geometry back into Rhino. So a typical grasshopper definition could look something like this, where you have your input parameters. In this case, we have a couple of numbers like a slab thickness here and so on. But an input parameter can also be an object like this surface. And then in the middle, we have the rules. And in Grasshopper, uh, these boxes are called components. So they take an input, do a calculation, and produce an output, which can then be used by the next component in line. So once we let these rules run now on the input parameters, we get geometry produced in Rhino. So we get this slab, but we also generate some columns underneath that slab. And with the Tecla integrations, we can then take this output and feed it into Tecla structures to get our actual constructible model. So the integrations can be found on Tecla Warehouse, as we mentioned. And in addition to an integration with Tecla structures, we also have an integration with Tecla Structural Designer. And Tecla Structural Designer, that's an analysis and design tool. Um, but 
this might not be available in your area, or maybe you're doing a, a type of project like a bridge, which isn't really suitable for technical structural designer. Then you also have the options to go out to uh, quite a whole bunch of different A and D softwares. So there are links to uh, at least the ones you see here on screen, straight from Grasshopper. So you can build up your own like custom workflows quite easily. So with that, I'm going to jump into the live demos. And here I'm going to start just with uh, Rhino and Grasshopper, Rhino on the right hand side. And again, assuming that not all of you are familiar with it, let's just show that we can do some uh, simple modeling here in Rhino. Like if I want to create a curved wall, I can do that quite easily. So just using some commands from within Rhino, and we can go in here then and keep modifying this uh, wall any, any, uh, any way we'd like. So it's very versatile and it's loved by a lot of architects for that reason, and that's for a good reason. But here we're not actually interested in doing this manual modeling. So instead we want to drive the model parametrically from Grasshopper. And Grasshopper you can see here on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna start with something real simple, say create a small box. And for that one, I will need an input uh, which is a re rectangle. So I'm picking that one in Rhino and feed it to the box component. And then I give a height, I will say two meters. And I have a small parametric box, which, you know, not very exciting, but hey, we're just getting started. So to make it more interesting, I can actually create an array of boxes. And that gives us some new parameters. So let's say we have seven boxes like this. And we can vary it, of course. And maybe I want to go and add an input point, a reference point that I can use then for moving my boxes around. So I just want to just up. I just want to point out that Sebastian is presenting everything live, so he is not afraid that Tecla link will crash. So. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> don't 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 jinx it. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we have this uh, reference point, and now everything is generating according or relative to this point. So. The next step here in this demo will be to try and get this into Tecla structures instead. So let's bring Tecla back onto the screen. I'm just gonna reorder the windows a bit. This is always tricky when you have all the three softwares on the screen at the same time. Two screens is probably uh, more, uh, more ideal. But anyway, in Tecla structures, uh, because it's a BIM tool, we don't deal with surface geometry like in Rhino. We have actual semantic objects. So if I want to create a slab, I pick the slab type object and I can then pick uh, a couple of points and generate my slab. And similar, I can place you know, columns just by clicking random points, or I guess they shouldn't be random, but here they are. <laughs> but again, that's not what we want to do here. We want to automate this from Grasshopper. So I can decide on uh, what type of object I want to create as my box. And I go in here into the Tecla uh, live link. And you can see that the components we have here, they largely uh, mirror what we have in Tecla structures for modeling. So I pick my slab component and get that input rectangles, uh, those rectangles as a boundary. And then I can set a profile. Let's just use the height. And finally, we can position them like we have in Rhino. And it's a live link indeed. So let's just illustrate that by changing the parameters. And you can see how they uh, will react in both softwares simultaneously. So what you see is, is uh, what you immediately get, hopefully. So now I'm going to use these uh, slabs as some pad footings for a small structure, just to build on this example a bit more before we jump into the ne next one. So for that, let's start by finding the uh, center points of those uh, pad footings. And let's show it in Tecla as well. 
And don't worry if I'm uh, going quickly through these components and it seems like uh, gibberish. Uh, you will quickly learn what's what in Grasshopper once you start working with it then in Angular. But anyway, we have the points here in red and I'm going to create an array of points and extend it in the upwards direction. So that will be the Z direction. And let's say we have spacing uh, for a structure. Uh, the floor spacing could be four meters. And then we take a look, sorry, geometry direction. We need to connect this one. So then we have our points here extended in the upwards direction. And maybe I want, you know, seven floors. I'm just going to move those out of the way a bit. And now we want to connect these points with a polyline to get our axis for the beams. And they can be seen here in green in Grasshopper. And we pick the steel column component from the uh, live link. And we get the columns in Tecla structures. And maybe now at each level, we want to add an edge beam. So we can do that also. Just manipulating the, the point order here a bit and create new polylines uh, around each floor. And let's insert beams around them like this and close off the polyline. And at the same time, we can insert some slabs as well using that same input. So we start to have this small small structure here. And just to make it a tad more interesting, I'm going to give it a slight twist as well. So we have the same number of floors, but now I have an uh, input parameter for an angle, which is in radians. And then I'll add this transformation onto my, my horizontal or vertical extension. So don't worry if that didn't make sense. Uh, the outcome is anyway like this. And now I can actually start twisting my levels. So hmm. do some more interesting stuff with the uh, building. And this is really fun to play around with. You can see that you always get that immediate visual feedback. So you know if what you're doing works or not. And we can even go back here to the first input parameters, that reference point. And you can see how it just reacts to anything I do in, in Rhino Grasshopper. Yeah, it looks really, really good. Just yeah, 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 uh, Jacob, uh, bridge designer, just said that you're a brave man, that you are doing all the quick intro and everything live and so quick. So yeah, just showing the potential, how it, how quick and response this connection is. Uh, we have also... Cheers, cheers yeah, Jacob. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> we have also a quick question uh, Hello, from please. Luciano. Uh, we, yep. had some, so we, we had some little bit lag uh, about the data manipulation and beam purposes or just modeling. So, yeah. So, of course, it's possible to also manipulate all the beam data that actually all the user-defined attributes that you're defining, actually you can do also through Grasshopper and is coming more and more components uh, about that. So yeah, so just quick uh, quick uh, answer for a question, uh, Luciana, you can also do all the uh, beam information manipulation. Yeah, yes, Sebastian, you can continue. Yeah, yeah thanks. That, that's a really good question and I can show it here actually. So being a beam tool, we have all these uh, uh, attributes that we can add uh, for the different objects and of course we can feed that from grasshopper as well so say these columns i want to make them another profile i can then go in and pick the profile catalog component which is live connected to tecla structures so anything available in your tecla environment will be available here so i'm gonna uh, pick a circular section and make it a big bigger and now we have round columns instead and same thing, like I said, with any attributes. So if we just look at a few more, we have here name, profile, material, and so on. Let's go ahead and change the class because that's you know visual. And we can also add user-defined attributes, so uh, stuff that you would then utilize when doing documentation and drawings and, and uh, st stuff like that, which you then maybe export and so on. So all that can be entered through Grasshopper. 
and it can also uh, come into Grasshopper from, say, an Excel sheet. There are good links out to Excel. So you can really build your own custom workflow in, in any way you'd imagine. Yeah, this is a really good point because really often uh, uh, at work we are using Excels to import to not have all the data in the in the grasshopper because sometimes it can be too many component uh, many parameters but actually uh, gather all the UDAs in the Excel spreadsheet and then send it to tech Club through grasshopper is a really wise idea yeah um, so with that I think I'll delete this example and jump ahead into another one and this is a bit bigger but it's it's based on the same id so if i just let it load in we're generating a couple of, of thousand objects here already so it takes a few seconds but the building you see here so essentially like i said it's based on the same id so within this definition uh, if we look at just the first few components you can see that we have those points and lines and stuff in the same way we're just then building on that one and we can quickly look just at what kind of parameters we have so for the roof here we can have you know just change the layout uh, whichever way we want and same thing for for everything here like the spacing of of the exterior facade and so on so everything comes from the same grasshopper definition and also if we look inside the building we have defined like all the structural uh, members here and also the building core and it's all being driven here by by the script and of course we have the master parameters so if i want to go in here and change the number of floors reduce it a bit uh, uh, i can just change that one parameter and it takes a few seconds and it will update the model in tecla and give it a bit more twist and so on but uh, at the same time let's just take a moment uh, uh, break here and think about what we're doing because uh, many of you as structural engineers would of course uh, argue that hey uh, you're not responsible for these kind of parameters and that's very correct i mean those would come from the, the owner or from the architect uh, you can just go in and decide how many floors you want in your building normally but i'd say that's uh, actually still still a benefit here because on a project like this, uh, most likely the architect would have been used Rhino and Grasshopper anyway. So you just need to make sure that you have a good workflow with the architect where they can share parts of their definition or at least uh, you know the, the parameters and the algorithms they are using so that you can then build your, your structural model based of that same, uh, same script that they are uh, using. So that means that then when it's time to hand over the design or the updates, you, you don't get a bunch of drawings or a, a crappy model or anything like that. Not all models are crappy, but still. But instead, you can get uh, just the new parameters and your design gets updated kind of for free uh, as soon as the architect decides to change anything. So this yeah, is a really, the... really nice like, yeah, sorry, Chris. Yeah, yeah no, no, I just want to add that there is more and more architects actually that are providing uh, like uh, outputs uh, in Grasshopper and uh, Rhino. So actually we are getting um, much more often right now, like an input, not just a drawing or a Revit model, but actually we we are going more often just a Rhino, Rhino script. And actually there, there was a, yeah, a but... question a question about like people are asking on the on the chat because you are like right now you ch just ch showed uh, two demo examples but people are are actually interesting uh, what about the detailing because now it's uh, about you're not showing like there is a connections or cuts uh, fittings yep. um, so this is like I'll, people yeah, are interesting good. about that good good to hear I'll, I'll show that in just a moment okay uh, and good good that you confirmed as well that uh, actually this workflow uh, works between architects and, and engineers. Uh, that's what we heard from customers as well. Uh, but I was just going to mention analysis and design at this point because I mentioned there are links to all these A and D tools. Uh, so what I've done here is that I've collected a couple of outputs from the model, like the floor surfaces and uh, uh, center lines of the beams and columns and the building core. And these are ready now to be sent into the analysis application of your choice. And here I'm, of course, going to use Tecla Structural Designer. 
So uh, I'm going to bring that up on screen now here on the right hand side, and I won't be demoing it uh, as much as such. It's just you know uh, an AND tool, which is very good at what it does, of course. But it's similar to Tecla Structure. So we have different uh, components here for Tecla Structural Designer. So we can bring in our slabs first. And let me just establish a connection then to the to the Tecla Structural Designer model. Yeah. Actually, th that is good that you are showing because there are two already two free people are actually asked about that uh, connection to Tecla Structure Designer. Yeah, so, so yep. here you have also a quick uh, representation how you can actually co calculate the structure in the Tecla Structure Designer. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to bring in the slabs and then let's bring in the columns. For this one, I won't be bringing in the beams because there are thousands of them and that would be maybe too slow for this example. But let's bring in the building core as well which we can bring as a wall and add that to the mix. And then what we also can do is bring in our create load loading, uh, load cases and load combinations in Grasshopper. And I prepared some components here. So let's add some dead loads onto the, uh, uh, onto the, slabs and then create a combination with the self weight and we'll bring that into Tecla Structural Designer as well. So once I've done that I can go into Tecla Structural Designer and trigger the analysis. Let's pick that combination that we just created. And it will then take a couple of seconds to, to analyze this geometry for us. And now once that is done uh, I can go in and check the results. So let's pick the load case that we have defined and take a look at the results and deflections. So here for the columns and then some for the uh, walls as well, or the building core as well. And we can get the, get this visual feedback and also the numerical results and so on and use that then to inform our design in back in, in Grasshopper Tecla. And there are even ways you could actually have triggered this analysis straight from Grasshopper as well with this component and even get back some, some data about the analysis results to kind of completely automate this workflow. But uh, that that's as far as I will go now with this example for Tecla Structural Designer because it's, it's not really a tool that I'm intimately familiar with, so I, I yeah. don't dare bear. But basically, you can. Right now. But basically, you can but, get your information about forces, for example, or internal forces into the Tecla Tecla model. Uh, yeah, and, and then from <clears throat> from Tecla Structural Designer, you have a, a couple of ways then to go either directly into Tecla, or, or then you can get at least some of the results back into Grasshopper and feed them into the tech law objects as UDAs, for example. So I guess there are, it depends on, on what workflow you prefer and how you uh, build it up. And maybe if we do a follow-up webinar at some point, it would be good to explore like how all this would come together in, in practice in a real example. Yeah, because there are people are actually are asking about that. Like if there, you can, for example, calculate the bridge in the Tecla Structure Designer, or is mainly focused on the building and structures? It's it's for buildings, I'd say for bridges, I would go with, uh, well, I don't, don't want to uh, advertise a particular company, but I'm gonna do anyway. Uh, Sophistic is a really good solution yeah. if it's available for you. Just, just they, go for they've it. They've got There's... a good, good link. <laughs> yeah, yeah they got a good link with Grasshopper and, and we actually showcased that in, in a, in a YouTube series with, with Gabriel Neves, which you can probably find if you Google as well. Yeah. So Tecla Structure so, uh, Designer is Tecla most structure. for building, right? It's for buildings, yeah. Um, yeah, so it was uh, talk about the detailing. So I'm going to bring up a new example here. So here we're, we're just generating this small uh, portal frame again. 
And at this point, it's no surprise that it's parametric and you can change uh, what it looks like. But what we want to do here is look at connections. So within Tecla structures, like uh, without Grasshopper out of the box, we have uh, a set of standard connections and you can add your own, and there are hundreds of them. So for this situation with the bracing, for example, I can pick the standard bracing connection and Tecla will ask me to pick the main part and the secondary. It will then place that connection for me. And these are all already in themselves, like parametric and intelligent. So they will adapt to different situations. And you have a bunch of attributes and stuff that you can set for them to uh, customize them. So what we really want to do with Grasshopper is not to replicate this connection, but rather just to tell Tecla where to place it. And that's what we can do here in, in Grasshopper. So we have the input columns and we have the input bracing, uh, which is being generated. So basically, we're just then telling uh, Grasshopper that, hey, please use this standard bracing connection, same that we had here, and place it uh, between all the appropriate, appropriate uh, members here in the model, which is did, it did uh, fairly quickly. And similar, uh, similarly, we can insert then the haunches uh, and at the apex. And let's also insert the connections for the purlings. And it takes a couple of seconds, but then it has inserted here uh, some 150 connections for us without us needing to go in there and, and click and, and do it manually. And of course, being parametric means that if you find issues like this, uh, where the, the connection actually maybe is too far out, we can just either change the attributes of the connections or just decide that we can move the purlins a bit up. And then it will, uh, Tecla will regenerate, or Grasshopper will tell Tecla to regenerate those connections uh, where they should be in a stylish it's really, black really, color, apparently. Really good. Really good answer for the question if Tecla uh, Live Link and Grasshopper Tecla Live Link can be used for the details because it's really powerful when you have lots of connections and and on top of that you can create your own application and components, right? Yeah, so you can. Uh, I mentioned it uh, briefly previously. So with the custom component editor, you can create your own uh, connections. Uh, but it, it might be a bit challenging then when you want to add a lot of intelligence and stuff, but but it's something that's completely doable. But in many cases, I would even advise that that's the way you would do it. So if you don't find a correct connection, uh, I wouldn't start generating all the bolts and, and well, bolts are, are even not available out of the box. Uh, I would create like model manually one connection in Tecla and then save that as a custom component. And then similar to how we have done here, just tell Grasshopper where to place it. So that, that's uh, a, a more performant workflow, I think, than having Grasshopper generate thousands and thousands of plates and bolts and stuff. Hmm. And there's a quick question from Jose. How can you copy uh, attributes for each type of connections? Copy so, for each type. Uh, like an input. So I actually, guess... yeah, this one. Hmm. Yeah, so all these attributes here, they they can be set from from Grasshopper. Uh, it's not as straightforward as what we had for the beams, for example, because they can have any name. Uh, so what we need to do is actually find out what they are called. And maybe I think we're good on time. I could potentially show it. Or may I, let me get back to that at the end of the webinar. Yeah, no, no, we no, no, no problem. Time. No, no problem. We can come back. I will, I will register that. So we'll come back to that. So you can continue. Yeah. Cool. Because I'm going to show one final example here um, to look at some concrete as well. Let's pick that one. So the script here will generate this bridge deck, and you see we have here the the curving deck as well with the double T profile, and that comes straight from, from Grasshopper, of course. Uh, we also get the terrain, and that has been uh, saved within the Grasshopper definition, but that could have been referenced into to Rhino or, or Grasshopper as well from somewhere else. And same goes here for the road alignment. So that's just a curving Grasshopper right now, but you can read it in from a DWG or 
maybe from an Excel sheet with a set of coordinates that you just read in and interpolate through. And again, yeah, we have parameters for everything. For example, if I change the peer location here, you can see that it actually will uh, follow the ground. So it detects where the ground level is and will automatically adjust uh, depending on, on where the ground is. But the more uh, interesting uh, uh, feature with this example is perhaps what we have inside the deck. So here you can see, wait a minute. Let me just snap. Uh, we have some reinforcement. So not everything that you would put in here, but enough to illustrate. And it's alternating lapping and so on. And all that is driven again, no surprise here from Grasshopper. So just to illustrate, I can increase the number of bars here at the bottom of the, the double T's. And a really powerful uh, way, our uh, benefit of, of doing it this way is of course, when it comes to change management, as I mentioned previously. So if I want to go in here and change, for example, the width of the uh, deck, I can just change the profile and the deck will update. And together with that, then uh, the rebars will also be recreated in the correct locations. And similarly, if I want to change the abutment angle, let's say that should be minus 15 degrees, the deck updates and the geometry or rebars follow. Or even if I want to uh, have a completely new road line. So let me just bake the road line into Rhino. So we have something to modify. And now when I change the road line here in Rhino, you can see how the geometry immediately updates with all the peers and stuff in Tecla structures. So this could potentially say what would have been days or weeks of rework uh, and just you, you do it in a heartbeat. So that hopefully really shows the power of, of a parametric workflow. Okay. And with that, let's jump back into the presentation to take a look at some project examples. And uh, uh, first I'm gonna mention here, we have a yearly competition called Tecla BIM Awards or Tecla Global BIM Awards. And uh, Chris and his team is, of course, a proud winner uh, 2020 with the Rancela Bridge uh, project. And we'll also uh, take a look at that in a moment. But there are different categories and hundreds of contestants. And what we saw here this year was really interesting because uh, from the finalists, more than half of them uh, mentioned Grasshopper or a uh, visual programming uh, workflow, like a key part of, of the overall workflow. So it really shows that engineers are prepared to like let go of that tedious manual repetitive work and they want to do the creative part of, of engineering and use the tools that are the most efficient possible to, to achieve that uh, that goal. So it's some really of the amazing. examples include it's amazing. Here. It's amazing to see that uh, increase about the numbers and maybe before it was just an infrastructure project, but now maybe it's more and mm -hmm. more building, right? Yeah, yeah, and that's what we see. And of course, I mean, the contestants here, they are the, the top projects, like uh, many are maybe a bit more complex than your average project. So I don't know how representative this is for the, the major markets or uh, segments, but it's still, uh, it's still uh, an interesting number. So one of the con uh, winners for the best, this was the best commercial project, the King's Cross in, in London. It's a train station by Arup. And this was just grasshopper all over. So from the structural frame to the foundation, to the rebar, they also did calculations uh, that they uh, triggered from grasshopper, brought the results back in and so on. So uh, a really nice project overall and, and really shows the benefit here of the, the parametric design approach. And one of the reasons was of course, to keep up with the constant changes and the requirements uh, on the design. So not to be forced to do that manual remodeling all the time. And uh, here's a case from Denmark. They had these wooden facade cassettes that they actually created as intelligent components in Tecla. Uh, and then they used Grasshopper to drive the parameters, the input for those components and place them into the model. 
and Grasshopper in turn it got in it got uh, its input from the architect's Revit model and also from the window manufacturer's uh, database. So as soon as the architect made a change, it would automatically propagate all the way through to to the structural model, which was really nice. Uh, Helsinki Airport we already looked at, and uh, still a lot of infra projects. This is one from Peru, and like we may maybe mentioned a bit, this is where it makes total sense to use a parametric workflow because normally in a bridge project when the road alignment changes, uh, you might need to redo almost the whole model. So having it parametrically defined just makes uh, so much sense. And you have road line, which is really complicated, like a clotoids and curves and everything. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's stuff in there that you maybe wouldn't be able to do even manually. Mm. So that that's really cool. So so previously so previously here just a just comment from Yari what a beam extrude. <laughs> uh, he he was mm -hmm. about to uh, ask you that before it was maybe possible with the beam extrude, but it was lots of uh, lots of lots of work. So some joke from uh, Yari. <laughs> yeah, and well, that's a fair point. I mean, of course, we have been building bridges for you know hundreds of years without parametric design, so it's certainly possible. But this just makes it so much easier and more efficient, and you can find those really optimal designs. So, but good point, yeah. Uh, this one I like a lot. It's an airport in Chile, and the engineering company mentioned here they had the task of designing the roofs and soffit systems for the terminals, including for the satellite terminals, two of which we see here in the picture. And they started off with the first terminal in only technical structures, and that took them six months to model. And similar with the second one, four months, a bit faster. But they realized that this is just not efficient enough. So for the third one, they decided that, hey, let's try to use Grasshopper to generate those objects in Tecla instead. And with that, they were able to get it down to just one week for the third terminal, and then finally 26 hours for the fourth one. So really a huge jump in, in productivity here and, and a nice like uh, testament to how efficient you can become on the right yeah. project with the right tools. Yeah, it, and it, actually it was a question from the BAPU, how much percentage time can save in Tecla by using Grasshopper? So here is a good example, how it can be limited. Uh, of course, they have some yeah. uh, experience from the previous terminals, but still uh, there there is a huge difference. It is, yeah. And, and of course, I mean, airport terminals, bridges, those are all kind of complex geometries. So. I imagine you wouldn't see the same uh, like efficiency gain in, in a more traditional project, if you call them that. But there, any, any, anywhere you have repetition or, or something that you feel that could be automated, there is time to save for sure. Uh, this one I wanted to quickly show because it shows a bit different workflow. Uh, so Docker here, they actually, they start with the Tecla model, at least in this case, uh, which has been modeled some other way. And then bring bring the geometry back into Rhino Grasshopper to be able to determine uh, where they should place all those scaffolding components. And those components have already uh, they are available in TechLine in their catalog. Uh, so rather than going in there manually measuring and, and picking and placing all those components, they just use Grasshopper to automate it. And this is an early example. They have a way more advanced usage of Grasshopper nowadays, from my understanding. But that's one one potential workflow as well. And more bridges. This was one of the uh, earliest ones that we saw from here in, in Helsinki, Finland. It was fully modeling Grasshopper, and here they linked out to Sophistic and Tecla uh, at the same time. So they were able to have that analysis model generated at the same time as the beam collaboration model. Tunnels, uh, same challenges, challenges as uh, bridges. So again, makes sense to use more bridges i won't go into details on these ones because i wanted to mention the run silver bridge so the one that chris and his team uh, did it's an amazing bridge and uh, famous in many many different ways uh, one thing to mention of course is always that it's the longest bridge in the world that has been uh, constructed without drawings but one of the geometrical challenges here was to place the tendons and also uh, uh, the, the hundreds of thousands of rebars. 
So for, for much of that, they used Grasshopper. And as one of Chris's teammates says here, it's nearly impossible to model some of this stuff manually. But with Grasshopper, mm -hmm. it just becomes a walk in the park. So yeah, especially, really nice especially, especially, especially tendons. It was like more than 300 tendons. And every single tendon was different geometry so it will be like mm. almost impossible and in this case also reinforcement in the deck um, most of stuff you could like do manually like maybe with not so much saving in the like foundation and columns but if you look on the deck where you have variable heights or variable parables so here is just you must uh, use a uh, grasshopper yeah yeah really, really nice work by the way so with that, let's just quickly wrap up before we run out of the hour. We'll continue for half an hour, like Chris mentioned. Uh, I'm going to reiterate some of the benefits that we saw here, uh, or hopefully saw here. So first, with parametric design, you can find better solutions because you have more time or, or more possibilities to, to try out different variations. You don't need to model it all manually, so you can properly explore the full design space. And all the automation, like I mentioned, it can be really tedious and it's uh, unnecessary to, to spend a lot of time on that when the computer can do it. And this, of course, improves the productivity. And it allows you to react to changes really quickly. Just change your input parameters and you have a new design, uh, at least theoretically. This reduces risks because you you have that extra time so you can properly explore the promising solutions and also you have less risk risk of human errors not that computers are completely uh, without fault like i said but but still and all this can help to reduce a per project cost by requiring less staff but don't be worried it just means that your company will be able to take on more projects so that's actually a good thing and finally again i want to uh just mention how, how customizable workflows you can have uh, with this approach. So you can take inputs from wherever uh, you can build your, or the architects can build their model, you can build your analysis model and uh, collaboration model all from the same kind of parameters and, and definitions. So it's really, really versatile. And at the beginning, we already mentioned about how to get started. So you can download the link from Tecla Warehouse, you can find the Tecla Structures Educational version if you want to try that out. Rhino Grasshopper also comes with a free evaluation version. And then when it comes to support and training, then of course, first you go to learngrasshopper.com, right? <laughs> and you check out the resources there and you sign up for Chris's newsletter. And keep an eye out for those uh, training courses that he mentions. Uh, that's a really good way to get started. Uh, the resellers do also offer courses uh, if you can't wait to the summer. But keep in mind that uh, often those are not like created with engineers in mind. But if you have a good understanding of Tecla, then maybe it's enough to just learn Grasshopper. And that's something you can also do online. Uh, that's the way I started. So, so that's not an issue. It might just take a bit more time. But there are really great forums and good tutorials uh, about you know, designing shoes and stuff. Not that much for engineers, unfortunately, but still, yeah, it helps you coming. to learn Grasshopper. It's coming. And that's it's coming. Then... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, we're waiting for, for Chris to fill that gap, right? <laughs> so, yeah, that's the formal part of, of this webinar. So, thanks for the stage. Yeah. Very, very impressive presentation. Very really nice examples. I see already. And many people commented that you made a really good presentation here. Uh, thanks for the credit about uh, learn learn uh, learn Grasshopper. Just before we will jump to all the questions, so we will try to answer all of them. We have uh, a half an hour, so I will just um, I just created a guide. If you go to Grasshopper in Tecla.com, uh, I have created a like a Notion document when you can just go and directly uh, check uh, how you can actually uh, uh, start with a grasshopper in Tecla. So I created this kind of document when you can just go and be familiar with grasshopper, Tecla and Rhino, what is grasshopper, how to download, uh, how to set up all the 
properties, units, and exercises. So there is a lot of exercises, uh, how to import references, for example. So there is uh, examples about like human uh, plugin that already asked about that in the, this webinar. So you can find a lot of uh, scripts and examples here, how to start and actually start with your first project. So you can, uh, you can actually go to uh, grasshopper in techlab.com and you can uh, just download this guy free guide so you can actually start right away. All right, so we can go to question. There is a bunch of them. So yeah, many questions that you made a good, good, good job. So there is, <laughs> so there's many of the good, uh, good words about your presentation. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go to. Thanks I everyone. Have some Appreciate it. Let's go to some uh, comments uh, right now. Okay, so let's start with the, okay, maybe from this one. Yeah, polybeam smooth, uh, smoothness is added. I don't know if it's a question about modeling, about modeling polybeams in uh, Tecla. Maybe you are more, you know what yeah, uh, Hussein is. I, yeah, I imagine you're, you're referring probably to Sorry, we probably have a bit of a lag, but I imagine he's talking about the the um, uh, chamfers uh, in Tecla, mm. uh, potentially. So that's something we we can't control from Grasshopper without uh, a small C sharp component. Uh, there are, there are examples of that I think in the forums because people have asked about it, but it's not available straight up from out from the link. The only exception okay. is if you have a, a an arc then it will automatically be converted to a three-point arc in Tecla. But other than that, the polybeams will always be polylines rather than uh, polycurves. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, fair enough. Is it possible to use Tecla Grasshopper link with DVG input, architectural layout to set the structure boundaries, for example, or with an existing Tecla model? Yeah, so for the DWG one, I think you mentioned the human plugin. Uh, is that what you would use? And actually, but you can with also... an existing Tecla model. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just continue. Sorry, we have some lag. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So with an existing Tecla model, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you can reference in stuff from Tecla structures into Grasshopper. I didn't show that now in this presentation, but there are components just to read in geometry from Tecla. And then you can access either the properties or then the full like uh, surface, the solids. So depending on what you want to achieve, I, I'd say that yes, it's possible. Uh, this is the question that actually we were talking before uh, before we went uh, live about the drawings and the and the live link, and we've been discussing about that. Uh, maybe you can just uh, say <laughs> more clearly because actually I saw a lot of question about that. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be honest here. Uh, as long as I'm the sole developer, I simply don't have resources for it because if we start like catering for drawings, as soon as we do something little, uh, there will be requirements to have like everything. And that's just a project that I'm not capable of handling uh, on my own. So for now, we, we just kept out of everything drawings, unfortunately. Yeah. And uh, now the question from Jan, are you planning to add control over the polygon nodal sequence definition for Tecla plate elements and their local coordinate system orientation would help with custom connection definition? Mm. That's uh, to be honest. I'm I'm not completely sure what this even yeah, refers to. Yeah, it's I was. I, I I hope that you are going to answer this question. So Jan, <laughs> if you, so Jan, if you can um, write more specific about that, what you are actually referring to uh, about the what nodal sequence definition? Maybe it was about also like the chamfers uh, in the in the plate. Oh, okay. Maybe Jan will write something Could more be. about that. Could be. Uh, okay. What would you suggest for creating complex geometry in Tecla? Tecla native objects using profile and components tool and adding cut parts 
or using direct items components from the Grasshopper? It's a really popular question. Actually, a lot of my colleagues are actually asking the same question. Maybe you have good experience. Yeah, and it might be. Yeah, it, it might be that you, Chris, have even a better answer. But generally, I would recommend that anything you can create as kind of more uh, basic or traditional elements like beams, plates, and so on, you try to do as beams and plates. Because that way, when you, for example, add reinforcement or add connections or anything like that, they will just work much better. Usually, they don't work at all with items because they haven't been developed with items in mind. But of course, then sometimes when it comes to a, a double curved bridge deck, for example, it just you can't create it as a polybeam because it wouldn't be smooth. You can't control the cross fall. So that's where you would resort to items, um, of course. And one additional thing there is that uh, beams and plates uh, would be more performant than items because in the Tech API, items are quite slow. So if you try to generate thousands of items, then you will have a slow, slow script as well. Yeah, I have the same answer, so it's a actually good one. So everything that you can do with uh, native objects and make some cuts and modification, just go for it, create a profile. Still, maybe creating profile for all items can take also take some time. Uh, but uh, actually, I do not experience a lot of problems with items. Maybe sometimes uh, if there are some drawings, so maybe uh, it can be some problems with the visualization if there is complex geometry, but uh, another things that go doing great. Another question was about, is it possible to transfer information from example, Revit to Tecla with use of Grasshopper? I know that there are some uh, like plugins to import directly some geometry from Rhino, but actually there is a Rhino inside Revit that actually you can get some information and actually with the same, if you are get, if you get, have this information in Grasshopper, so you can easily transform to Tecla, right? Yeah, I, I haven't tried it myself, but I, I understood that it's possible to use Rhino mm. inside Revit. Uh, here is about, yeah, this is a good question from Mirko. Uh, I typically use Tecla Live Link also for detailing phase. Are there any plans to control the numbering directly in Grasshopper and assembly drawing creation directly in Grasshopper? Mm, yeah, I guess not to like trigger the numbering and, and control the settings for that. Uh, what you, of course, can do is, is set the numbering attributes for each object and so on, like the start number and so on. But beyond that, that there, there are no plans at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, here, the notes about like components about and rebar assembly sets. drawing. Yeah, we, we already covered it. Yeah, yeah, so there is no plan for making the drawing components. But here, it's really interesting one about uh, rebars, bolts, and new features that you mentioned at the start about the new uh, new releases. They will be it will be the edit added to the previous Tecla uh, versions. Like if you are going to release everything new in 2023, are you going to add it to previous or is going to be like stopped and just from the new version? Yeah, so everything that's supported in a previous version of Tecla, uh, we try to add there as well. Currently, we support back to, I think, Tecla Structures 2018, and probably will continue with that for, for this year. So uh, answer is yes. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. There was a, actually uh, from the Maki uh, marriage. I connected a bit late. Could you comment uh, on human plugin if you got the time later during the webinar? So actually, if you go to, uh, I will just show the link. Uh, here, gra Grasshopper in Tecla. So actually, there is a one uh, a chapter about how to use human uh, plugin and actually how to import all your references, meshes uh, from DVG file and actually made items in in Tecla directly with the, all the classes and uh, phases based on the layers. So actually go to Grasshopper in Tecla and you will find the information uh, about uh, how to use a human uh, plugin. Uh, Ralph, is the speed improved for the connection? Previously, it was slow. 
Yeah, I, I think the connections, they should be as fast as if you were inserting them uh, manually. Uh, now, rereading this question is probably about the live link itself. And if you can specify what you feel that is slow there, then, then uh, I'm happy to take a look or comment further. Yeah, I think like like uh, your live demonstration today, it showed that it's really quick and it's not going. But uh, I I can say that maybe in the previous editions with the items it was quite slowly, but now it's getting getting better and I see a lot of improvement. So uh, it's much uh, I in, I might say that it's much it, it's much faster. Um, mm, okay. It was about some reinforcement detailing by using Grasshopper. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sebastian already showed some how to use rebar sets. Maybe in the next webinars, we are going to make some more details about reinforcement. So, uh, stay tuned. Uh, how can I copy the attributes for each type connection? This was question already. Uh, so I can answer, but because there is a two ways right you can in one way maybe you can uh, create uh, your set uh, save your set of preset of your all the attributes for the connection and actually you can use this preset just to refer to the name or you can refer all the find out as you mentioned before find out the names of the particular uh, attributes from the connection a uh, little bit maybe hard to find it's not that straightforward um yeah, do you want to comment something on that? Yeah, so what I would recommend that you do is to use the deconstruct component uh, component from the graspable Tecla link. So with that one, if you insert it, you should see some. Uh, thanks, Chris. So you're, you're sharing, I guess. Yeah. So what, what you can do then, let's go back to that. Uh, bracing thing. So imagine that I have inserted this connection now here manually. I can then go in and reference that into the deconstruct component component in Grasshopper. And then at the output here, I should be able to find all the attributes that are used within that component. So these are the attribute names that would be backing uh, the fields that we have here. So if I want to find out uh, what field this is, for example, I can just uh, modify that one. And then when I update here this, uh, this component, I can look for my the value I was interested in. Did I actually modify it? No, I modified something else. Oh, ah, yeah, I did. So it's, it's a bit cumbersome, but it, it can be done, certainly. Do I have, there's my HJ1 attribute. So now I don't, that's the one that controls uh, that field mm. here. I, now you can actually go in and copy these attributes like this. So let's see, copy data and let's paste it here. And now you have kind of a template that you can then feed when you want to create a new component. Uh, you can then feed this to the attributes input and change your data however you want to. Mm. So that, that's one way of doing it. Not the most convenient, but uh, the best we've figured out so far. Yeah, and actually you can also deconstruct your panel, right? And you can make some modification with slider and put some information like more, uh, uh, more maybe parametric than static in the panel. So for sure, it's a good way for doing. Thanks for, thanks for showing, for, thanks for showing that. Um, okay, let's say, let's go to now the next, uh, next question. Let me see, I will hide it. How do you cope with modeling the analytical lines, primary beams with a secondary beam running on top? Does the secondary beam uh, line have an offset of half the main profile height? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about best practices here, but I mean, if the question is about best practices, I, I, I'm afraid I, I can't answer, mm -hmm. but I mean, however you want to set it up is it, possible. Like you can have double lines or a single axis with just offsets to different sides. Mm. 
and uh, there is lots of question about examples are there any any anywhere uh, available the examples and the presentations so we will going to talk about it with the sebastian but is there any uh, way to see these examples i know that there some of them are available on the warehouse right yeah some of them are i think at least the bridge one with some or some hmm. some version of it i might need to update it maybe this warehouse as well i need to check it hmm. we we should be adding adding some of them to warehouse yeah you're, you're right yeah so let's but there let's, are a couple of other ones okay. as well on on warehouse uh, is it possible to make double curved beam beams? Yeah, with the... You can you can do a double curved poly beam, but I would recommend against it, unfortunately, because uh, they kind of you can't control the cross fall of the beam, so you can't determine what angle it has at the end point. Uh, basically, it's it seems to be the same algorithm in Tecla that if you do a sweep in Grasshopper, which means that the, the end uh, kind of uh, might might not be the orientation that you expect so rather i would do some kind of maybe lofting in in rhino grasshopper mm -hmm. and then uh, create an item in tecla structures so this is one of the cases where an item uh, actually is validated yeah yeah actually it's a it's a best way to do that um michael uh, asked about how does it work with shits i think it's about filling uda's values so actually you can import your uh, Excel uh, spreadsheet with, for example, lunchbox component, they have it. And actually you, you can get the data already uh, in uh, in Grasshopper. So this is the way of uh, getting it. And some qu next question, extra dose bridges can be also be modeled via live link. I can answer that as a bridge designer, of course, every type of a bridge can be, uh, can be uh, designed and made in, uh, in the connection and especially extra extra dose to which you can model all the cables uh, inside and the cable state uh, also outside the bridge and um, let me see next question there is someone have uh, some issues i have created some objects in grasshopper then i have to create items in tecla objects using tecla items but it will take so much time to complete all things yeah this is maybe yeah, about meshes about. so yeah. yeah so so using uh, items can take time and that's very true if you are able to regenerate those objects as you know beams and plates then do so if it's a mesh then you can actually look at creating a simpler mesh in rhino grasshopper so there are components in grasshopper to uh, control the meshing settings when you have a b rep that you want to transfer for example so look into like how many uh, vertices and faces do you have in your mesh if there are hundreds of thousands then probably you don't need all of them and try to simplify it in rhino grasshopper before sending it into the item component yeah yeah like simplifying mesh it's always you need to remember that always whenever you connect surface or b wrap it will always be changed to mesh right yeah yeah uh, correct and uh, how to synchronize tecla archicad and grasshopper I can also answer that. So there is also live link to Archicad. Actually, it was before Tecla. It was one of the first. And actually, you can also get the same surfaces, same lines, uh, actually, from Grasshopper to Tecla. Uh, for auto the, same as, uh, the same as with uh, Revit. Um, OK, some next question. Let's say, Sebastian, is a shoe canvas the one behind you? uh this is is shu an artist or this is a <laughs> painting by a friend if that's uh the, the one you're asking about yeah okay i was i was thinking about that uh let me <laughs> see uh, maybe some from uh thomas uh maybe a few words about grasshopper component and its future yeah so the grasshopper component we didn't cover in this presentation uh, maybe we'll do that in the future but essentially that's a way to kind of hide your grasshopper definition and uh, create or drive drive the, the tecla model uh, 
from from a Tecla component which talks with Grasshopper. Uh, that was the first example I showed, if you remember, with the portal frame where I had the, just a dialogue in Tecla structures. So that was talking with Grasshopper in the background. So in terms of its future, I mean, um, I would like to to have more customize uh, customizability for the user interface, but I haven't figured out just how to do that yet in an intuitive way. But for now, it, it is what it is, so to speak. And if you have like technical requirements, then I'm, I'm happy to hear those as well, of course. Uh, Michael uh, said about uh, like Tecla is based on meshes and this is about a big burden, uh, but not everything. I think not everything is based on meshes, but... I mean, he, he is right in that regard that we don't have those true mathematical objects like NURB surfaces or splines and stuff. In the end, everything, even if it looks smooth, it will internally be kind of a polyline. But I mean, there are always ways around it and you can have tolerances and, and precisions and stuff like that. Uh, it depends on, on your workflow, I guess. I can imagine it can be a burden in some workflows, but most of the time it's it's sufficient enough. Yeah, I think like with the engineering precision, it's we don't need we don't need uh, even like with the complicated bridges with the curves. Actually, we don't need the smooth uh, SP line. It's okay with the polyline. I think it's the tolerances. Maybe if you're working with a really something special, like a real detail, so maybe it will be a it will be a problem. Uh, Jacob uh, just points some of the problems with to unroll plates and beams on drawings when the objects are created in Grasshopper is not working perfectly. Mm, yeah. Okay, uh, that's something we could look into. I mean, if you feel free to reach out with with an example which we can use to replicate, and and happy to try and and see what's going on there. Victor, it was this question about going from AutoCAD into Grasshopper. So one way is, like I said before, a human plugin, and another you can also do it manually or use geometry pipeline. Or there is a bunch of components, so you can find it in Grasshopper in Tecla.com. So you can find there uh, a guide for that. Uh, just a few minutes left, so let's go to uh, some question. Uh, just from uh, Federico, is it possible to create Tecla custom building elements? For instance, if you work on masonry building, cultural heritage from Grasshopper, are there problems with specific meshing routines? Yeah, I guess we have the object types that we have. You can't, uh, you have the, the beams, uh, plates, and uh, bolts and, and stuff like that. You can't like as such add a new object type but of course you can always use say an item and use naming and, and other attributes to to like communicate what kind of object this is so uh, in terms of problems with specific meshing routines uh, there, there there might be i'm not sure if this is what you refer to but uh, when you mesh an object in rhino you can have different settings for it and not everything is suitable for Tecla. So especially if you have very uh, small triangles or very thin triangles, Tecla doesn't like that. So try to make sure that the, the triangles are at least, you know, up a couple of millimeters long before trying to send them. Hmm. Just came uh, some explanation from Jan. If you are defining plates using polyline, Okay, in Grasshopper, we are unable to control the first node and orientation of the first polyline segment in Tecla. There's an, an automatic function in Tecla, so where you insert a plate, it doesn't matter in which order uh, you pick the points, is it clockwise or, or counterclockwise, because Tecla will then always make sure that kind of the up direction is in the global set, so it might flip the order of the points. But there is a way. I'm not sure what link version you're on, but in in the uh, in the previous versions on the plate component, there's an input called orient, which is a boolean. So if you set that to false, then it will bypass that, and you should have the input points in the same order that you have them in Grasshopper. Hmm. Because Jan, Jan is pointing at especially arc-like curve uh, portion uh, in the polyline. So yeah. 
yeah I, i'm not sure if we covered the, the question exactly yeah i think so i, I think so like uh, maybe it in the newest edition should be solved uh, some user ask about the bolts uh, if there is planning so yeah the uh, sebastian already answered that there's actually planning to implement that bolts in the future future uh, editions mm. Uh, Francisco, it will be great to manipulate custom UAs depending on the script that is loaded. But it's not actually Grasshopper component what is doing. That's what it's doing, yeah, more or less. Um, not sure what else this could refer to. Hmm. Uh, let me see. Uh, how does the class structure deal with world coordinates having in mind the terrain import? Are you asking about Tecla or Rhino? So, yeah. So, so actually, yeah, I'm going to refer again to Grasshopper uh, in Tecla.com where you can find the basis, basis, how you can actually find out or make uh, import your reference model and create base point because Rhino can make uh, can work on the word coordinates, but actually it's a problem with meshes, the same as in Tecla. So it's the, the best practice is to move around the 0, uh, 0. 0 0.0 in the, uh, in the Tecla. Uh, Brian, hi, Sebastian. Always great to see you live in action. Follow up on Ralph Barnes uh, Barn Common. Uh, uh, if I change 400 connection in Tecla from Grasshopper Link, is that faster now? <laughs> I think it's uh, it's as fast as it ever was. I mean, uh, the problem we had sometimes uh, previously is that uh, it might freeze because it gets uh, the API gets kind of jammed when you try to do all that at once. That happens sometimes, but if that doesn't happen, then the speed should be equal to if you sat there manually and added those components into Tecla. So um, most of the time, it, it should be as fast as it has always been. There might mm. be some stability improvements there. Uh, it's, is, is it possible to make complex geometry like terrain excavation model in Grasshopper? Yes, Sebastian showed how to how models can be done. And actually, I model a lot of excavations based on uh, B, uh, B wraps and items. But actually, here I have a like I have a question to Sebastian because we, when we were looking for some improvements, so actually it will be good to have uh, like like you can have your reference model in Tecla, so and actually you can take this reference model to your Grasshopper, so you have this kind of link already, not to have this one reference model in Tecla, one in Rhino, and if something changes, you need to do in the both ways, yeah. Uh, and I, was I would, I would back... love to see that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I get that. So the, the short answer is a technical, boring one because we can't get the solid from a reference model uh, from the Tecla API, and that's always been the case. And it doesn't seem like we're we're able to change that in the near future. So unfortunately, that won't be possible for the time being. Mm. Okay. Yeah, we are going to uh, to wait on that. Let me see. We are out of time. Um, uh, I don't want to uh, bother you with more questions because we are just agreed with the one and a half hour already. It was a lot of a lot of content, and uh, we promise and we can say it now that uh, I think it was a lot of interest. So and lots of questions. So we are going to keep this kind of webinars. We'll find out a new time and new topic. Just maybe if you are interested in some topics, so write to to me. Uh, in my email, Chris at learninggrasshopper.com. So maybe your topics some are really particular uh, interested, but I see that people loved your presentation. So uh, so huge respect from Marius and this presentation was extremely knowledgeable. knowledgeable. So thank you. And I hope you, I hope we answer the most of the question. I know that maybe some of them are still not respond, but if you have any, any, just write to me. Uh, so I will, if I will not get the answer, so I, I, I have direct connection with uh, Sebastian right now. So I will bother him with all the, all the technical, all the technical questions. Uh, so for now, do you want to add something at the end? 
Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for taking the time to show up and thank you, Chris, for, for having me. It was quite a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, all, uh, all of you, for being here almost uh, almost to one and a half hour. So good luck, and we see you on the next webinars. Thank you again, Sebastian. That was a pleasure. Thanks. Bye Take bye. Care. Bye.